Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Roxanne Speed with Enjoying Life Supernaturally. I just want to give you guys some detailed clarification on the fivefold ministry. I've been getting a lot of questions um, and there's a lot of confusion out there. And so I just wanted to bring some, shed some light on what it is easily and practically so you guys can apply it to your life. Maybe you're called to the fivefold ministry. Maybe you're drawn and attracted to it and you don't know why. Maybe you're not and people are telling you that you're supposed to be in this ministry and you have no desire. Um, so hang in there, watch the whole video and um, you guys will love it. So, oh, I just wanna welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you guys. Y'all make this all worthwhile. Oh, and don't forget to stop and check out our live broadcast. We do a live personal prophetic ministry every Thursday and Sundays at 2 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time so you can just jump on and welcome back all my family I love you guys y'all are awesome if you like the content please give me a thumbs up it really does make a difference hit that subscribe button notification button so you get the content and share 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 Jesus says it's better to give than to receive so hope you guys like it out here it's a beautiful day finally and I just thought the change would be good so all right let's get back to the Bible ministry so is it biblical yes is it relevant today? Yes. Is everyone called to one of the fivefold ministries? No. So Ephesians 3, I'm sorry, Ephesians 4.11 says that when Jesus ascended, he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So there are only five, just to get that straight. There's your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, your pastor, and your teacher. And I'm going to start today mainly on the apostle. I know that the prophet is very well known. Thank God for that. Um, over the last couple decades, the prophetic, prophetic ministry has really um, risen. It's been exposed. Um, uh, God is just getting us out there and we are going. It's rampant, which is a good thing. However, the apostolic ministry is kind of like the prophetic ministry um, was, again, a few decades ago. It was misunderstood. It was taboo. Um, people just didn't really understand it. And so a lot of people that were called into these ministries just let it go by the wayside, not because they were disobedient or, or evil. It was because no one was there to equip them. So when Jesus called or gave some of these people, because not all people have this gift or are this gift to the church, why did he do that? He did it to equip the saints, the everyday believers, for the work of the ministry. So we are to build up and to edify, to encourage, to draw out, to teach you your gifts, your callings, lead you how to find, follow, and fulfill your destiny. So even if you're called to the marketplace and you're called into the hospital, Medicare, I mean, Okay, you work in Medicare, the medical field, um, government, the media, education, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be church to walk in this um, assignment, this office, having this role or duty or function. So I hope that's clear. All right, you guys, another thing. So an apostle, what that means in Greek is a sent one or a special messenger sent one on assignment. So like Apostle Paul, he was called Jesus God, Jesus sent him, the Holy Spirit sent him to different regions of the world. He was called to the Gentiles, guys. Gentiles were the non-believers. They were like the Romans that worshipped false gods or the Greeks with Greek mythology. And he came to establish churches, peoples, to know Jesus Christ, to rise up in their calling, and to produce other churches and pastors and evangelists and teachers and prophets. And so they all work with the apostle, right? Okay. The apostle, yes has a special authority that comes from God to do a special work. So, does the apostle walk in all giftings? Yes, my answer is yes. And I derive that from the word and from my experience and I've asked the Lord. Now, have I not met an apostle, um, mainly men that have said they're not prophetic? Okay, I take them at their word, they're not prophetic. Maybe they haven't used it, maybe they don't know about it. I mean, people are emerging every day and new information is coming out there and God is releasing revelation and people like you and me, we're speaking it hopefully, right? So we're educating people. God says that people perish for a lack of knowledge, so we're not gonna let that happen, right? Not on our watch. All right, another thing. You're not watching this by chance or mishap or because you just clicked on my video because it had some blue skies. No, God specifically allowed you to have a divine appointment to watch this video. Maybe you've been feeling like you're called to preach the gospel recently, or you're called to start a church or a Bible study or to go out there and, and start a business. 
and you have a feeling um, you're drawn to the apostolic you hear the word and your ears perk up or you you um, you see people starting companies or, or, or I don't know any organization or new churches and you just you come alive you get a passion inside of you that could be pretty good uh, let's say um, sign that you could be called to this this um, role doesn't necessarily mean that an apostle is one that is chosen specifically by Jesus Christ look he took the 120 when he walked on the earth then he took the 12 and then he had his three so he took the 12 disciples after they walked with them and ate with them and and talked with them and did life with them and cried with them and cooked with them and laughed with them and and you know got rebuked and slept with them in the means of sleeping anyway guys that's what discipleship is but that's another topic later so anyways he took the 12 of them and he trained them he replicated himself in them so an apostle is a spiritual parent but why i'm telling you this is is do people drawn to you do you naturally um have a gift to counsel people and you're usually pretty good at it all right it doesn't always mean you're a prophet you could just be prophetically gifted or you are a prophetically gifted apostle it's out there it's real now an apostle is going to operate be able to function in every one of the roles so the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the teacher and generally god takes the apostle through each one of the functions so they can learn again because they are to build up the pastors to raise up prophets to raise up um, evangelists and teachers they're no higher than guys but there is an authority in god's kingdom there's a ranking system just like america just like the world there's always you know um a chief and then there's people below him and i'm and, and that's just god's design not mine so i'm not saying that god is a respecter of no man but he did place a call of uh, um to this office on certain individuals and guys please respect it because the price that the apostles and the prophets um, pay to walk in this gifting and this calling to equip you to go out and be successful to overcome the enemy to you know raise the dead and heal the sick and cast out demons and give people their minds and set the captives free to really really get serious and do business we pay a price um, we've either been betrayed numerous times, have walked through rejection time after time after time. So I'm setting somebody free right now. Rejection may be your middle name or heck, maybe recently it's your first name or you don't fit in or you go against the grain or you, what is that? You march to the beat of a different drum, so to say, or you were rebellious and they called you a vigilante. No, maybe you're called to the apostolic and it's real similar with the prophetic as well. So again, You've been marked from birth, from before birth, because God wrote all of your days in his book before one even took shape. But from birth, you were called in your mother's womb. He said, an apostle, prophet, but I'm focusing on the apostle today. So you were called from a young age, from birth. Maybe there was something in your, you know, um, when your mother was pregnant with you and you were conceived. Maybe she tried to abort you and it didn't work. Maybe she tried to abort you and you got brain damage or, or physical um, abnormalities and you suffered from those uh, maybe um, you died at birth I don't know there was something that the Apostle goes through because Satan knows the signs he doesn't know everything he's not a creator he's only an imitator but he does know he is wise when it comes to this he studies us guys so he's been trying to take you out since birth He's been causing rejection and persecution and just pain after pain after pain. But God used it, right? God allowed it and he sent it in most cases to train you, to strip you, to mold you and to shape you. It wasn't because people didn't like you. It wasn't because you were weird or because you were unlovable. It wasn't because your parents didn't want you. No, go deeper, guys. See with the eyes of the spirit. God used that as he did Joseph being thrown in a pit sold to to slave owners by his brothers you know i've been through this not that exact situation because there's no slave owners today well i hope not not here well sex trade but anyway and um betrayed stabbed in the back like jesus by the very ones that you love and you help so he allows this to happen time and time again for the apostle to lose to, to have individuals and families die to lose houses and cars and, and reputations and anything that you put your confidence in 
it's gonna go away. You're gonna build back up. And that's not to punish you, it's to discipline you. It's to train you. Welcome, Apostle. Are you critical? And maybe you think you're judgmental or you're haughty. Let me help you here. I used to think this about myself. I would go into a church no matter where I went and I'd love it. I'd praise, I'd worship, I'd really like the word, but I could not stop multitasking. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I would be criticizing in a good way, liking the pastor, liking his pastor, be like, oh, he should do it this way, or oh, if he added this, or oh, if they'd let the Holy Spirit flow right now, or if they'd worship a little longer, or oh my gosh, please, please prophesy to people. I would see, or in the children's ministry, or, or things that God lets us go to different churches or through job after job after job. Why? To train, to know what to do and what not to do. Because you are called to build, to plant. You're gonna be sent. You're gonna move. You're gonna pick up and go, right? So, you have an eye for things, established organizations that need change. You're not okay with the status quo. You're not good with mainstream. Mainstream doesn't work for you. You want to change it. You want to get out there and you think, oh my gosh, if they just give me the reins, I could do this and this and this. And maybe you'd make it better. Maybe sometimes you'd fail. You're very, very, very keen, keen, keen on picking up the presence of God. And you have been since a little child. Apostles are called, remember, from birth. So they are always and have always been very, very, very aware of the presence of God. His power, just who he is. There's just like an innate ability in us to pick up the presence and power of God and a strong gift of discernment too, discerning good and evil, you know? Hold on, you guys. So guys, just know that if you're weird, rejection's your middle name, you wanna make things better, you wanna build, you wanna reach people, you can see gifts and callings in them, you can pull them out, you have a natural ability to encourage and you've suffered like no other, then just know you might be called as an apostle, but God, Jesus himself, is gonna give you a strong personal conviction of that. Not man first, Apostle Paul said, when it was um, God, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, time to reveal that he was an apostle. He said he didn't confer with flesh and blood. He went straight to, I think, the backside of Arabia. So God is gonna give you, Jesus Christ, a personal conviction you're gonna know and then as you go and you train and you're humble and you're quiet and he knows he can trust you and he get ready to commission and release you he will show the world of your authority all right guys I hope you enjoyed it I'm gonna go there's a lot more on this and I'm gonna keep teaching so I love you guys take care I hope you liked outside it's a little different and if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below um, if you want to know more about the mentorship for those of you that are on my lives please send me an email. And uh, if you feel led to sow into this ministry, you know, guys, sow sparingly, reap sparingly. Sow um, in abundance and you're going to get back in abundance. Given it shall be given. So guys, if you feel led to sow financially, please do so. I encourage you. The information will be in the description. If you can't sow financially, just sow through prayers, through helping, subscribe, and spread the word, okay? All right. I love you guys. Again, share, share, share. I'll see you next time. Take care. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love y'all.